Hello my dear doctors. Dengue is one of the most important concerns at this moment in our country like Bangladesh. It's not only the concern for this country like Bangladesh and also the concern by other countries like Thailand and Philippines and all the temperate countries. Yes my dear doctor, I have come forward the guidelines that is made by the national guidelines for the critical management of the dengue syndrome by the national malaria eliminations and it is transmitted disease control program disease control unit of the dg health services of bangladesh we have come forward with this talk on these national guidelines because we with the doctors having a very less frequent time and nowadays each and every physicians are really busy enough to manage the patients in each and every hospitals with the huge number of the dengue patients at the outpatient departments as well as the hospitalized group of patients so i will try my best level to talk on these national guidelines especially for the doctors who will treat the patient and who are treating at this moment very well and managing the patients very well but once again the guidelines is really important and you all doctors must to stick to these guidelines i've gone through these guidelines many many times and you'll be glad to know that i'm working in holy family at christian medical college hospitals and i have seen the huge number of the patients admitting every day and we are treating the patients and we are trying my best level our best level to stick onto the guidelines and sticking onto the guidelines making me as well as the other doctors those who are stick onto the guidelines giving them a good confidence that yes we are following a guidelines i would like to give an example smiley if you purchase a mobile phone you will see that you will have a manual books and it is written everything the proper adequate and effective use of your mobile phone so the same thing happened in our medical science whenever the disease having the a very good guidelines and of course if it is come from the national guidelines based on the national group of peoples and if you follow them so yes we can give the best services to our patients and make a good contributions to the country peoples to lessen the some of the sufferings and all them together from the dengue syndrome yes my dear doctor i'll try my best level to go through them the each and every topics here in the guidelines and if this guidelines and the lectures on the guidelines will be really helpful yes my dear doctor that will be yes uh, happiness for from my side yes so let me start by you see that these are uh, guidelines for the dg health services and this is the fourth edition in 2018 and this editorial board these respected persons here those who made and give their utmost efforts to make these guidelines to be more and more standard and these are copyright issues here and you see the contents here yes the guidance starts with the chapter 1 the introduction and epidemiology of the dengue you see the chapter 2 starts with the pathophysiology and clinical manifestations of the dengue infections and chapter 3 the lab investigations of the dengue diagnosis and management and chapter 4 includes the dengue case management and some of the list of tables are given and we'll go for each by each by one and some of the abbreviations that acronyms are given here so these are dg health sir so the messages and these are editor chief editor sir and uh, deputy program manager as well yes my dear i'd like to focus here before starting that i'd like to say is a disclaimer this is just my the best efforts right to to give the messages based on the guidelines and i'll try my best level to make these guidelines to be more and more easier and palatable so that each and every physicians can have some of the idea and can send some of the remembers or also mem memorize all the all the guidelines here so that we can use them 
for our patient's management. So, aim of this guideline that starts with understanding the Dengue syndrome in a comprehensive way and offers the best clinical service and advice, and diagnosing management at all types of care, community to hospital through the tri system, and uniform use of available tools in a systematic manner customized to local situations. So, yes, if you follow the guidelines, if you all physicians stick onto these guidelines and managing the patients, I think, yes, the patients will get the best benefits. To whom these guidelines are intended? Of course, the clinicians, nurses, or direct care in care with the Dengue syndrome, and program personnel who are involved with the prevention and control of the Dengue syndromes, and healthcare managers and policy makers, hospital managers are responsible for planning and implementing various plans, operations, programs, and activities, and medical students and residents who are customizing the working knowledge. Yes, this is the chapter one, this introduction and epidemiology of the Dengue. And this chapter one introduction and epidemiology of Dengue, it includes, you see, the Dengue is a disease is caused by an alvovirus, which has the four related virus serotypes. What is that? You can make a circle, the four. So before starting, once again, you just go to the website of the DG Health Service and you'll see that Dengue guidelines is given. So if you have this printed material in your hands or you can collect the full books of the Dengue guidelines, national guidelines for the clinical management of the Dengue syndrome in your hands before going to this lecture. So it will be more effective for you right, to follow these lectures. It will be helpful. So it is the most important not to put transmitted human viral disease. So you must know this is the most important. Yes. And constitutes an important worldwide health problem, including Bangladesh, dealing with a systemic and dynamic infectious disease. The infection may be asymptomatic or present itself with a broad clinical spectrum that includes both severe and non-severe clinical manifestations. After the incubation period of the four to ten days, yes, make start the four to ten days, the illness begins abruptly and is followed by three phases. Yes, my dear, three phases. Starts with the febrile, critical, and recovery phases. What I say, the febrile, critical, and recovery phases. For a disease as a complex in its manifestations, the treatment is relatively simple, inexpensive, and very effective in saving lives as long as the intervention is done in a correct and timely manner. So this is a very important message for all of our Doctors, yes, if you treat the patients based on these guidelines, so that will be, yes, it will be the simple, inexpensive, and very effective and saving lives. Reducing dengue mortality requires an organized process that guarantees early detection of the cases, its classification, treatment, and referral when necessary. The key component of this process is the delivery of the optimal clinical services at all levels of the health care from primary to tertiary. Most dengue patients recover without recurrent hospital admission, while some may progress to severe disease. Yes, the most of the patients don't need the admissions, hospital admissions. We'll see and how to do that. Principles of case classification through the severe, severe criteria and management decisions at the primary and secondary care levels where patients are first seen and evaluated can help to identify the patients at risk of developing severe dengue and the requirement of hospital care. These decisions should be complemented and prompt an appropriate treatment of the severe dengue in referral centers. Yes, my dear doctor, in this introduction, if you pick up the important words that are really helpful. So if you try to make some of the boxes and write them together, that will be really helpful, some of the boxes, my dear. If you write down that this is a dengue, you just need to remember the dengue. Yes, the four virus, we call the den one, two, three, four, and the most important, and it has the three phases. These are important, my dear. The phases are, yes, starts with the febrile phases, and then next the critical phases, and next the recovery phases. So, yes. This is the one of the box from these 
the discussions onto the introduction just to remember the dengue having the yes the four virus serotypes and having the three phases of the febrile critical and recovery next to the epidemiology the epidemiology of the dengue exhibits a complex relationship among the host man and mosquito and agent in the environment these relationships determine the level of the endemicity in an area and the transmission of the dengue remains low due to extremes of the temperature with a low relative humidity temperature just in the range of 25 degrees centigrade with or without plus minus 5 degrees centigrade relative humidity around 80 percent and innumerable small water collections result high transmission so yes it is said that the transmission of the dengue remains low due to extremes of temperature the low relative humidity yes the dengue virus the dengue virus forms a distinct complex under the genus flaviviruses you can circle it flaviviruses based on antigenic and biological characteristics there are four dengue virus serotypes uh, designated den v1234 or den1234 is the infections any one of these serotypes confers the lifelong immunity to that virus serotype this is one of the important informations by there yes the lifelong although all four serotypes are antigenetically similar yet they elicit a cross protection for only few months secondary infection with the another serotype or multiple infection with the different serotype enhance the chances of occurring more severe form of the diseases yes my dear circle then i'd like to make a box here a very important box my dear the secondary infection just write on the secondary infections yes it enhance the chances of the severe dingo syndromes secondary enhanced severe just write on the secondary enhanced and severe form of the diseases and the box my dear the factor the it is egyptian and also it is elbow victors are the two most important vectors of the dengue but it is egypt highly domesticated and strongly atrophilic it is elbow victors is an aggressive feeder and can take the amount of the blood the need for each genotropic cycle in a bite they usually are distributed in the peripheral areas of urban cities it prefers the natural larval habitats so is the natural including the tree holes latex collecting cups in rubber plantations leaf exhales bamboo stumps coconut shells etc however breeding has been reported recently in domestic habitants so these are the domestic habitats and x of it is mosquito can remain in a viable dry condition for more than a year so this is also an important more than a year they can be viable and emerge within 24 hours once it comes in contact with water there's also a major hurdle in prevention and control of the tango so what is the hurdle major hurdle this x of the a this mosquito can remain viable dry condition more than a year and emerge within a 24 hours once it comes in contact with the water so here is a vector with the egyptian and also the victor summary talk natural and domestic habitats and the eggs can be viable more than a year and they can emerge within 24 hours when in contact with the water is a major hurdle in prevention and control of the dengue transmission cycle and the time the female it is mosquito usually becomes infected with the dengue virus when it takes the blood meal from a person during the acute febrile is a viremia phase of the dengue illnesses after an extrinsic incubation period of eight to ten days the mosquito becomes infected the virus is transmitted when the infected female mosquito bites and injects its saliva into the wound of a person beaten the cycle of the dengue continues by its process and the dengue begin begins abruptly after an intrinsic incubation period of four to ten days somebody says the four to 
7 days, 4 to 10 days, even the 3 to 14 days. Yes, up to 14 days, my dear. This is the message. That is also an evidence of the vertical transmission of dengue virus from infected female mosquitoes to the next generation. The monsoon and the post-monsoon in Bangladesh is a peak time to develop the dengue. In Bangladesh, monsoon unusually happens during June and July of this every year, and the case loads increases thereafter in August and September and can extend up to October. The message is that the time that I'm making these guidelines and the lectures on these guidelines, there's a month of June and July, and we already started the August and September. And the number of the dengue cases that we are seeing in our clinical practice and in the hospital that is alarming that the August and September can be more and more in number and can be extended up to October. So this is another message. The global burden of the disease before 1970s, only nine countries had experienced severe dengue epidemics. Today, the disease is endemic in more than 100 countries throughout the globe. The actual numbers of the dengue cases are underreported and many cases are misclassified. WHO estimate that indicates that 390 million dengue infections occur every year. 95% credible interval in the 284 to 528 million, of which is 96 million manifest clinically. A study of the prevalence of the dengue estimates that 3.9 billion people in 28 countries are at risk of infection with dengue viruses. Now the dengue case burden in, in Bangladesh. The first epidemic of dengue hemorrhagic fever occurred in mid 2000 when the 5,551, more than 5,000 dengue infections were reported from Dhaka, Chittagong, Kulna cities, occurring mainly among adults. Among the reported cases, more than 4,000 were the dengue fever infections and more than 1,000 cases were the dengue hemorrhagic fever among the 5,000 cases. The case fatality rate was 1.7% with 93 reported deaths, like 100 reported deaths. It is Egyptian, he was the identified as a main vector responsible for the epidemic and the Aedes albopictus was identified as a potential factor in Chittagong. According to WHO, the most outbreak occurred in 2002 with more than 6,000 cases and 58 deaths. The prevalent serotypes of the dengue until 2000 in Bangladesh were then virus, then V1, then V2, and then V3, with the highest number of the reported cases attributed to then V3. So this is the then V3 circle. A similar situations can be seen in other countries, such as India and Sri Lanka, where the then V3 has been reported most of the time in dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever related illnesses. Over the last 10 to 15 years, dengue fever and dengue hemorrhagic fever have become the leading cause of hospitalization deaths among the both children and adults in Southeast Asian regions. Diarrheal diseases and acute respiratory infections are other major causes of hospitalization of children. The dengue cases are reported based on info information collection collected from the control room at the DG, DG Hills. DGHS, and the source of information is mainly the public and private hospitals in Dhaka city and the information from other parts of the country is lacking, so it's very difficult to come to a definitive conclusion regarding the program perspective. So you can see the dengue cases and deaths in Bangladesh, yes, so if you start from the 2000, you see here, yes, the death is a red color here. So you see the 2000 and uh, 2002 here with a peak, yeah, and now 2016 having a peak, and now 2019 definitely is a more and more number. 